That's the way it always works. The guys with like a 3% body fat <laughs> go to McDonald's every day. For more on this weekend's Pro Football Hall of Fame enshrinement, we welcome... Touchdown. I go, hmm, interesting. I'm secondary coach, since head coach. Three touchdown passes in the first half. Yeah, Herm, what are you Brett, doing? Brett Favre, and I'm standing like this. Now I'm going... Are you kidding me? So Tony walks right up on the Bucks team because then John Gruden won the Super Bowl with that team that a lot of folks credit Tony with building. But uh, as someone from Tampa, when he won that Super Bowl with the Colts, a lot of people in Tampa, I would say the majority of the people in Tampa were so happy for him because you wanted to see him get one. I know you have a Brett Favre story. Before oh. we get to that, Brett was also, Peyton was also talking about Brett Favre and his enshrinement. Here's what Peyton had to say about Favre. Okay, so you already shared one story where Favre kind of took it to your guys. Yeah. <laughs> what made him so special? Well, I've always said this. If, if there's a word in a dictionary, and there is. We are happy to have the head coach of the Northwestern Wildcats, Pat Fitzgerald, with us this morning. A, a season ago, your team had this incredible start. Week one, you go and upset Stanford. You start out 5-0, and so no pressure. But what are you doing for an encore this year? Well, it's going to be really important. The girls were watching you this morning on TV, and they go, he looks so young to be a head coach, and you're 41. But I said what's most crazy about that is this is your 11th season. Yeah. So you were all of 31 years old when you take over this Division I program. When you look back now at that 31-year-old guy, what do you see? Oh, he was clueless. <laughs> and some people still feel that way about me. And I, and I accomplished, aside from pointing out the tougher features of your schedule, we were also talking about how 10 games last season for the second time in the past four years, and, and that's tough to do at Northwestern, or it has mm. been. How far does this program have to go to compete with when you look at your conference, sure. the Ohio States, the Michigans? Well, we're unique, you know. 19 FBS head coaches at the helm at their alma mater. How does that change you as a coach when you've put on that uniform? Well, this will be the 20-year reunion for the 96 Citrus Bowl team, the, the team that we won back-to-back -back Big Ten championships that I was up to. You hear from, give you coaching advice. You know, you'd be shocked. Not very many. Yeah, you know, not very many. Now, well, that's, that's good, to right? my face <laughs> and the, obviously either by, by a, a text. <laughs> I, I'm not overly critical of, his, of, uh, of him not wearing them, but <laughs> you got to also think bigger picture, right? You got to think about marketing. You got to think about branding. And, uh, you know, especially in, in my world, we were talking. Have you here in studio. Best of luck to you this season. I know your guys report on Sunday. And real quick before I let you go, if, if the Cubs were to win the World Series, are you okay? Absolutely. It would be unbelievable for our city. Uh, it would be a good time in Chicago. <laughs> uh, Coach Fitzgerald's team opens the 2016 season with Western Michigan. Uh, that is all ahead here on SportsCenter. September 3rd is the date on that. Uh, hopefully a great season for you guys. Tony, over to you.